Well, hello there, fourth and fifth graders. I just wanted to do a little cello video here since I brought Phaedra to school. I'll say hi, everybody. Hi, Phaedra. Hello, how's it going? So this is my cello. As you can see, I've got a couple of things missing over here. Special pegs that I use a key for so I can tune and get it close to my head. Let's talk about that first. As a cello player, this neck, or a bass player even, this neck has to be pretty close to what you're doing. A bass player will be a little bit like, more like this. A cello player will be nice and close here. Now, if you got that peg there, it's gonna be sticking and hitting your neck a little bit. You need to get used to that. For some players, it might be a little higher, it might be a little lower, it depends on where you place it on your chest. That's another important part too, the chest. Let me get my pen out of here. The chest has a hard part that's called the breastbone or the sternum. You don't want it going down into the squishy parts where your guts are and your tummy. That's too low for your cello. You want it in the hard part here. So adjusting the angle on the cello or the bass is very important. And of course that comes down to your end pin. Now I got a bent end pin. You'll have a straight end pin, but it's basically the same thing. You want it to have the correct length for your body. So if your cello is sitting down here like this, that's too low. And of course if your chin's on the cello, that's a little bit too high. So finding the right place for you is an adjustment you should take a little time to do every single day. All right, let's talk about bow hold. Cello players and bass players should have a bow hold kind of like this. You might be a little further back like so, but pretty much here, middle finger covers that silver part called the ferrule. Index finger curls onto this uh, pad here or winding, but usually the leather, sometimes it's a plastic or a rubber kind of feel there. Pinky goes all the way to the edge here. Ring finger covers the dot. If you're missing a dot, no biggie. Just imagine that it's there. And then on the underside, we want the thumb to be on its tip. Let me show you with a better look here. Right like that. Be careful of the thumb doing this. I call that the hitchhiker thumb. We want the thumb to have a rounded joint. Look at the circle I can make with my hand. And look at it this way. That's what we want to see from our thumb. Ooh, that's a good view too. Let me do that again. There's the tip of my thumb. So a common habit is that this happens and the thumb collapses. We want that thumb joint to be nice and rounded. All right, those are just some basic reminders. Now, what I wanted to talk to you about today is tunnels. One of my favorite things to warm up with is the siren. The siren's where our hand moves up and down the string. If you want to bring your fourth finger to the party, that's cool, but one, two, three is generally the easiest for the cello player. Pick a string and just slide up and down it. It's like we're polishing the strings. We turn it into a siren by adding our bow. I would stop before you get down here because it gets sticky because of the rosin dust. Now that's a really great exercise for just getting our arm moving and making some funny sounds. You can even make it seem like your instrument's talking, like What did you have for breakfast? You can start to talk to people that way. Now you take your siren sliding down one string and then try balancing your bow on two strings. Now that might be a little hard at first, so here's the test. This is the tunnel test. Can you slide your finger down on a D string and then play on the A string? For bass, you'll put your bow in the G string. Now this is happening your hand is laying on the string next door. You want to be on just the one string with tall, terrific curled fingers. You see that there? Almost like our fingertips are divers about to go into the ocean. And this big black piece of wood is our big black ocean. The fingers dive into the ocean. Here's the tunnel test again. Now that's a really useful thing when you're playing, say, a piece like Ode to Joy. There we go, sorry.
to give one little last bit for my fifth graders, especially in our new skills. That low one is our new skill, and it's going to be on the A string for B flat. We find that in Mars Walk. So regular first finger is here. But when we put a low one into it, it's back here. You can even practice a high-pitched baby sharp. there's the second finger. So, I think this one's an important one to practice and here's one way to do it. Let's just hop second finger across all the strings. So we practice second finger because up till now we've been doing one, three, four, and we've totally ignored the second finger. So we should start practicing one, two, four, especially for Mars walk. So this is hopping across the string. Now here's walking. walk we have two steps left foot right foot well with walking fingers we go one finger next finger one finger next finger here's what it might sound like with the bow here's hopping two across the string here's walking one two one two Do it faster. You can even hop fast too. Now, the next step is what are those notes that you're playing? Let's see, is there anything else for fifth and fourth graders today? Well, I think that's it. I hope you've liked seeing Phaedra today and getting a cello bass only video. If you're a violin viola player watching this, hey, you're learning about your friends next door who play the instrument where you have to sit down to play it. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any other questions about cello or bass, please put them in Seesaw or send me an email or even just tell me in class. Keep practicing, everybody. Here's a little something to leave you with here. Um, oh, let's do some blues. Thank you.